Now to get the Pico SDK up and running on your computer, you're going to want to download the link I put in the video description. In this link includes all the software you're going to need to get the code up and running on your computer. Now once you've downloaded it, just extract it to your desktop. Now additionally, I'm going to be adding a new user onto my account and doing all my development from that user. Now you don't have to do this because when you install all the SDK software, it's actually installing it to all the users. So you're not going to be separating any of the files here, but you will be separating some of your personal files and it could be less complicating if you're just starting out with coding. Now, the one good thing is you don't have to have another Microsoft account to add a new user. But when you do add a new user, if you do, you're going to make sure it's an administrator account. So now that I've got all that set up, I'm going to switch to the new user. So the first thing we're going to want to do is either download the files again, or we're going to navigate to the previous user desktop, which is in the C drive, users, and whatever username it was. We're going to break into it. Being an administrator, you won't get a denial. We're going to scroll down to desktop, and then we're just going to copy over the download pack I've linked in the video description over. And you can see that 7-zip isn't associated with the zip file that we have here yet. So I'm just going to open that up and tell it it is a 7-zip file because it's annoying to look at. Okay, so with that being done, we're going to start off with installing the GCC ARM compiler. This is for embedded devices. Now, this is so that our computer will have all the libraries needed to compile code for embedded devices, which is our Raspberry Pi. Now, we're going to go through the installer, and at the very end, you want to make sure that we include it to the path system environment. Now, with that being done, just click finish and there we go. So this software isn't being updated anymore. So you can be fairly safe that by the time you're watching this, this is still updated. The next thing we're going to be doing is Visual Studio. Now, this is just a link to the online installer. So once you open it up, it will link you to the Microsoft web page and give you all the modules you would like to install. So it may look a little bit different. So we're going to be installing the C and C++ modules, not every single one. So as you can see here, I'm going to be focusing on the basic pack. And then I'm also, if you want, you could do mobile devices, but I'm not going to. And then for embedded devices, obviously. And we're just going to install this. I've sped everything up just for the sake of this video. Now you can just go through the prompts and this will take a while to install. But once you're done, you should probably restart your computer. So I'm going to do that right now. Now the next thing we're going to be installing is Python 3. Now this is a fairly quick install, but the only thing you want to pay attention to is at the end of the installation is you want to make sure you disable the path limit length as I just did here. Now, once that's complete, next we're going to be installing CMake, which is the help build C programs. We're going to go through the installer and on this screen, we're going to make sure that we edit the path for all users and then we'll continue on with the installation. Now, again, I've sped up all the installations on this video just for sake of time. But with that being complete, we're going to jump over to the VS Code installation. Now, this is a pretty good IDE or a good software program to type up your code if you're just beginning with coding. Now, you can add a couple extra settings here, but you could just pretty much power through the installation like you have in all the other ones. And again, this is all sped up, so it might take a little bit longer on your computer. Once that's finished, we're going to finally well, I guess we could set up a default template. I don't like it being so dark. I usually pick a lighter theme. So here we go. Let's go with that one. I'll close this out. And now we're going to jump over to the Git installation. Now, Git is similar to GitHub, 
It'll let you download repositories online really easily. And we're going to be using it pretty much right afterwards. Now you can use pretty much the basic default settings. The only thing you're going to see me change here is I'm going to use the visual code as my default IDE. And I'm going to change uh, the comment option as as is. So, but you don't even need to change these settings. So, and you can see here, this is the as is. So then I'm just gonna power through this. Now with GitHub about to install, we'll have all the required programs that our computer will need to compile our code for the Pico. We're gonna restart our computer for one final time. And once we do that, we're gonna open up a command prompt by typing CMD in the search bar, and we're gonna open it up as administrator. So if you're not too familiar with command prompt, that's fine, just follow along by typing in CD and dot dot. That's gonna change the directory to one tier higher in the folder hierarchy. And then we're gonna do that again, and you'll see that'll bring us to the root directory of the computer. Now LS will list the directories in a Linux computer, but DIR will list the directories in a Windows computer. And then we're gonna to wanna to change directories into users by doing CD users. And then you wanna type CD on whatever user you've made. And now we're gonna to wanna to make directory by MKDIR and then space the directory name. And I'm gonna call it code. This is where we're gonna be downloading the Pico SDK. We're then gonna enter that directory by CD and then code. Now we're gonna type in git clone minus B for branch and then master for the branch name and then HTTPS colon backslash backslash github.com backslash raspberry pi backslash pico sdk dot git. I've included that link in the video description as well. We're gonna press enter and this will download the git or the git repository directly into the working directory that we're in, which is the directory we've made called code. Once that's complete, we can change directory into the pico sdk and we're gonna use git to download all the submodules by typing in git submodule update minus minus init. Now this will update all the other repositories that are within the Pico SDK that wasn't downloaded on the first round. Now, as I said earlier, I've sped up all the times for downloading and installing programs or files in this video just for the sake of time. Once it's finished downloading, we're gonna change directories up one tree by cd dot doc and we'll type in git clone minus b master master https colon backslash backslash github.com backslash raspberry pi backslash pico examples dot git. I've also put a link in the video description as well. Now these are all the example code that the Pico SDK gives you to test out. So we're not only going to download all this code, we're also going to build it to make sure it runs on our Pico. Now we're going to navigate to where we downloaded all this code, which is C drive, users, username, and then it should be in a folder called code. If it is, everything is working so far. Now we're going to open up a terminal by typing in terminal into the search menu. Then we'll navigate down and open up a development command prompt. Now we're going to change directory to where we downloaded all our code, which is in the C directory, which would be C colon backslash users backslash your username that you have backslash code. Then we're gonna change directories into the Pico examples folder by CD Pico examples. 
here we're going to want to make a build folder. So we're going to do mkdir for make directory, and then we're going to call it build. We're going to change into that directory. So once we're in here, we're going to use CMake to build all the files. So we'll type in CMake minus G, then in quotation marks, and make with a capital N and M. Make files with a capital M, quotation, dot, dot. Now this will create all the make files needed for CMake to compile later. This should only take a few seconds. And then once that's complete, we're going to compile all the files by typing in nmake. And here we go, we'll type in nmake. And this will start compiling all our code. So with that finishing, we'll close this terminal and we're gonna to navigate to where we've made all our code. So that's gonna be in the C drive, users, whatever username you picked, and then code, examples, and then in the build folder, we'll open up one of these folders and you'll see all these files. That is actually our build code. Now, the best thing to do to test this out is to plug in our Pico Raspberry Pi. So to do that, we're gonna to jump to our Pico. We're gonna press the button on the Pico and then plug that into our computer. Once it's plugged in, release the button and you should see a file explorer pop up on your computer, like so. I should have closed down the blink folder earlier, but we'll have to navigate back to one of our examples. Now, the best example to use is probably the blink folder. And this just gets the LED on the Pico to blink on and off. And it just lets you know that the code is running well and your Pico is running well. So we'll navigate to there and you'll see the folder blink. You are want to pick the UF2 file and drag and drop into your Raspberry Pico folder. And you can see here, once you've done that, it'll automatically restart and start blinking. So there we go, we got a working Raspberry Pico and we've got our computer able to compile the code for the Pico, but we're not done just yet. I've got here a Pico version of Visual Studio Code, which has all the settings to have visual code be able to compile C without doing any kind of setting changes. Now, as this thing is downloading, it's also downloading another copy of the Pico SDK. Now, this will be located in the Documents folder library of your user. Also, as another benefit, as this thing was downloading, it's also compiling all the example code that we already earlier did as you can see here. So as you can see here, it's already been compiled. So what we'll do is we'll open up the Pico version of Visual Studio or Visual Code, sorry. You do that by typing in Pico into the search menu and you can see the VS Code as one of the options. We'll let it get past the firewall here and you're gonna to wanna to pick the right and we're gonna go with the Pico ARM GCC. We'll click yes to that little prompt. And it's just gonna run through some of the initialization. And for a release package, I'm going to choose debug. And with that being all set up, we've got Visual Studio Code able to compile Pico C code as well. So you can see it's written all our code to this directory here. Now you can open it up within visual code or into its own directory. So if we had our Pico plugged in, we could just drag and drop, which you know what we might as well do and just make sure everything is compiled right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close down everything here and we will replug in our Raspberry Pi. Now to reprogram it, all that you have to do is press the button and plug it back into your computer. 
and then it should prompt up this screen again. Now with this folder being open, we'll navigate over to our new version of code, which is in our the documents library tree. So we can open up documents and Pico SDK, the examples, and then we'll go back to the build folder. Oh, that's the code folder, so you won't see anything in there. If we go to the build folder and then go into the blink, you'll see a UF2 file again, and we'll just drag and drop that into the Pico folder. It'll restart and your Pico should start blinking. There we go. Hopefully this helped.